Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. Today we have one that I am so pumped yeah, for. Yeah, this, this excites me a lot. Yep, this is one of the first App Lab games we actually played. You know, App Lab rolled out, we threw a couple on Crisis Brigade, and one of them was this game, DSIM. Yeah, this, this one had me from the beginning, and it has been awesome to watch the progression mm -hmm. of how it's been unfolding. It was pretty clear when we first downloaded it that the game wasn't done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to come, so right away we're like, all right, you know, let's stay tuned. Where, let's see where it goes. And today we're joined with the developer, Tommy, of Myron Studio, who's, you know, this is a big interview, not only because it's a game that we've loved, but this is one of the App Lab graduates. It graduated. The news came that it's coming to the official MetaQuest store, which... Well deserved. So, Tommy, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit to our, our listeners and also tell them a little bit about your game, DSIM, which we were pronouncing wrong the whole time? For the past year. Yeah, we've been saying Deism. <laughs> Deism. So, do you want to introduce yourself a Deism. little bit and then, like I said, tell, tell the listeners a, a little bit more about your game? <clears throat> yeah, of course. Uh, so, my name is Tommy Malato. Um, I'm the founder and of Myron Software and developer of the game Deism. Deism. <laughs> Uh, so if you don't know Daysim, it's a virtual reality god game. So it's inspired by the old classics like uh, Populous and Black and White that uh, that I played when I was young and a lot of people I know also played and enjoyed. Um, just at some point uh, I wanted to try to remake a classic game like that but for VR and try to exploit all the, the cool things that VR can bring to those genres. And this is it. So basically, in the sim, you play God, you create your own world, and there are small humans that uh, will pop up automatically and try to make their lives. And then uh, you can help them to strive and to progress from the Stone Age to the modern age and even futuristic age. Or you can just punish them in every way you want, play tennis with them in a tree, uh, grab them, eat them, burn them, there's so many things you can do. <laughs> and yeah, it's a big sandbox game actually, uh, there's no, no really big story in it, it's more uh, like something where you can do what you want to give you your own objectives. And yeah, this is more or less the pitch of the game. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think what's great about these God games is everybody goes in and they be that terrible ruler at first. Everybody's got to do it. You're you an evil like, God from you, the get-go. You yes. have to, but after you get that out of your system, realistically, the most enjoyment of the game comes from watching it grow. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's always fun. Everybody comes in, at least for me, like, first time you play SimCity, and they have the natural disasters and stuff. You build up a nice city, and then you, you throw UFOs and tornadoes. Meteors, yeah. Yeah, but you're not going to do that all the time because that... You know, no, my ratio to from evil God to good God is probably, you know, 15 percent evil, mm -hmm. like in ad a per needed basis, because <laughs> yeah, I, so. I mentioned before on a podcast, there's when I'm, I'm building up the mm -hmm. the different areas and there's certain like people I don't want. That just kind of like yep, bring so down the boop, culture. Throw so them into yeah, the... I, I have a volcano, and you can walk over and drop the character into the <laughs> so we <laughs> the volcano. But this this game, I'm telling you, since we got it to where it is today, every time that you've ever updated this game, it's it's been a pretty it's been a pretty major update. Like yeah. I know when I go back into it after I saw an update, there's going to be something brand new that didn't exist. It wasn't just like a a bug fix or. Yeah, and I mean, do you want to tell our listeners a little bit, you know, about some of the updates that came since the game released on App Lab? Geez, when App Lab first came out. From when it first came out. And to then to where it now. is now. And maybe also, maybe I'm not sure if the game's done in your vision. Maybe that's why it's going to the official Quest store, but maybe you have, you know, more to do as well. So do you want to explain a little bit about that stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, the release on App Lab was not the first one. Uh, the game has been released uh, for the first time in 2016 on Steam. It was a, when they released the Vive, more or less. Uh, so I wanted to find something to play, a strategy game to play, and at this time, uh, most games were shooters. Um, so I just made it for myself to enjoy it. <laughs> um, it was very rough. It's my first game, so uh, of course, when I started, it was very, very uh, simple. And uh, the core of the game was already there, but uh, of course, the content was a lot uh, less than it is now. Um, when it released on App Lab, the, the core of the game was already uh, really solid. 
the design of the buildings, etc., was was already good because I, I, it have been optimized for the quest. But um, the content was not as rich as it is now. Especially the kingdom update. The last one I did was the very big one. It added kingdom to the game, the wars, um, also more interaction with the kings, personalities for the humans. So many things <laughs> I cannot count in. Um, it's true that in general the updates are not really just bug fix. I really try to add a big piece of thing in it uh, each time. Ideally, something that not only has its own interest, you know, uh, like something that people want to try, but also something that has an impact on existing systems. So it's also really cool also to to retry stuff you already knew because they have even been changed a bit with the new update too. And yeah, it's the, I have a, a, that approach. Maybe if you think about game like uh, Crusader Kings, the Paradox games. I, I like stuff like that, so uh, for, the updates will be free, f at least for a while. But uh, the idea is each time bring new stuff and it makes the world really even cooler and cooler over time. So the, the, the game as it is now and as it is will release uh, on September 1st is what I call a very good and solid base to expand for the future. So the game will leave early access, as I think now it's solid enough to be called a game but uh, it's definitely not the end of the journey it's just the beginning for me <laughs> so uh what this, are what this are... actually is pretty incredible to hear because i i like i said i've been loving watching the progression kind of unfold and every time there was an update like we got to go back in and see what happened and whether it's a new we'll say class of or evolution that can take place but it's like every time i've gone in there too i'm learning some new Kind of important trick that's what's kind of pulled me to the good god side because mm -hmm. the oh, whole the whole like uh, it it's simple to learn it's actually simple to play but there is some strategy to it to a sense where you don't want to put shit so far away that your citizens can't get it to make certain things that they need and there's this like little underlining element that it's it's like all strategy games they're strategy you you can't go into it just doing whatever you need to. You need but to, you can. Yeah, it's probably not going to have the best end <laughs> result. You can. But I, I love seeing a game like this because I'm a sucker for strategy games, mm -hmm. and I think every strategy game in VR I played I've loved. But it's not a genre that people, you know, everybody goes for these first person, you know, super interactive experience. But like a game like Eternal Starlight, you know, it's third person. You're moving things around with your hands. It's just I, for me, it feels so good. Little Cities has that. Cities VR and DSM does too, where it's like. But you're in control of that world, yeah. Yeah, but I don't need to be on ground floor, you know, looking through oh, the no, eyes I, of a character. I totally agree. Those these these top down strategy games, I think, work so good in and VR. And you can zoom up pretty damn close. So I mean, I don't want to yeah. discredit definitely the artwork to. No. Mainly the I'd say the buildings are probably the the one that stands out the most. So I I totally understand if you don't want to you know start talking about things in case they're still in the works and maybe they can't get done or anything like that. But in your dream you know vision, uh, are you able to talk about any features that you would love to to add to the game that aren't currently in it now, or is that still a little little too in the works? No, uh, I have plenty of ideas actually. I also uh, try to involve the community a lot, so I have a site where people that play the game can suggest new ideas, but also vote for it, and I try to. I try to really take that into consideration. If a lot of people want something, uh, I at least try to keep the the idea of it, and I try to make it mine or my vision for that thing, and then to make it in the game. The the biggest one was the kingdom. I did it. Uh, no, the biggest one is the pirates. So uh, the next update will be about pirates, and uh, it will remake the entire system with boats, ships, trading system, um, cool pirates. <laughs> Maybe the pirate uh, localization too, I don't know yet. <laughs> and was that a community fun. voted one or was that uh, your idea for the, the pirates? 
Actually, uh, it's both because I really love pirating, but uh, it's also the most voted one now. So I seized the opportunity <laughs> and I'm really glad it was voted a lot like this. Yeah. So, That'd be like if somebody voted on a, you know, what 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 do you guys want to cover? And they voted on Star Wars thing as our listeners. I'd go crazy. I love Star Wars. So I imagine you saw pirates. You're like, all right, let's go. You know, I love this it This will work perfectly in my game. Yeah. So if, if somebody wants to go check out, you know, where they vote, where they partake in those community things, where do they, what's the website that they check? out for all that fun stuff uh it's uh, daysim.featureupvotes.com i can give you the link later yep. if you want and I'll, I'll put it in the show notes so the show notes being the episode description if anybody is listening this or watching on youtube or whatever and you know you want to go check out that website just look in the the episode description you'll see the the link uh, of how to find I, that i love one the cool game. thing with, with that it is also that site is also that you you don't have to create an account or something to to vote uh, it's just really simple to use so the, even if you just like the game you, you don't own it yet but you really have that id if it was in the game it's just the perfect thing for you you can vote for it that's awesome i love that kind of community engagement well yeah to to know that you know you started off making this for you and it's it's evolving and now it's to the point where you can say that the community's input actually is having an effect on the evolution of the finished product that's it's awesome times we live in when that that shit can go down in real time yeah the, the type of direct communication that developers can have with their community uh -huh. due to things like discord due to things like easy to build websites reddit things like that that's i, I love seeing it due to podcast interviews you know uh the, those these type of things are are great um, so, you know, you had mentioned the game actually dropped in 2016 on Steam. Uh, something I'm always curious to ask developers who have PC VR games also on the Quest, you know, when it released on the Quest and as it grew, what's the player base split like if, if you're able to talk about that? You know, is it like 50-50 PC VR players and Quest players or has, you know, Quest come out and completely dominated the player base? Um I think for some game it could be it's probably different for the sim the huge majority of players are on quest really it's uh, there's really no uh, no, no doubt comparison. about that no it's really it's really different um I think also the fact that the game looks quite childish a bit and uh, simple uh, it's not it's not the most advanced graphic game you know i I think player on pc VR pre prefer a game that looks really gorgeous and uh, want to use their hardware the most as they can. So maybe that make a difference, but I think even like that, the, the market is way bigger on Quest now for all the titles. Really. No, that's pretty consistent with the answer we, we get, but the reality is for strategy games like this, I don't need, you know, super good graphics. Maybe like a story. Super, yeah, like, like real life quality. No. I thought the graphics have been fine with the... But that's because we're Quest players. Maybe if we were, you know, PC, VR, you know, a little bit of elitist and we need that nice graphics. But I'll say even if I was, like I said, strategy games like this, uh, I play plenty of computer strategy games that have terrible graphics, but they have really fun <laughs> strategy gameplay elements and that's that's all it needs. Not that DSM has terrible graphics or anything, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's, it's, that's not really about it for for a strategy game so no the actual the actual gameplay is what's going to make it or break it for yeah me. that's way more important than you know a game like red matter 2 where it's story based and things like that it's a little bit more important but yeah. yeah a game like this to me that's that's not an important feature i just love some of the things you can do as god if you want to yeah <laughs> besides make it rain and yeah I'm, I'm, we're just thinking about it and now i'm starting to smile because i'm like oh yeah there's some pretty creative shit you can do yeah and i, I think it's only only going to grow so that's really and i did mention on another podcast the map size for this seems to be beyond huge i've like exhausted especially on myself PC, trying actually, to yeah. especially on pc on pc it's really uh, unlimited uh and uh, on the quest it's li quest 2 it's limited to um 600 600 uh, tiles for now i hope i will be able to expand it a bit so it's a really so huge big enough to have old civilization and to to make them all reach a futuristic age with all, all the stuff they need. So it's big enough, but uh, I, I would really love the world to be even bigger, of course. Um, it's not an easy task. Though. <laughs> <laughs> People need to realize it's big. It, it really is. Because you can, you can grow your, your land out or add water, whatever you need to do on the existing water. But I, I was blown away from the get-go at how big the map size is. Oh, yeah. 
I, I mean, tried doing a wicked long run, and I was like, I give up. I'm like, this is just huge. In the end, it's it's Quest 2, and it still supports Quest 1, so it's not only like you know, you're know you just maxing, maxing out on the Quest 2. It's like you still have to support the Quest 1 as well. So it's like there's there's a, you know. There's some give and take, I'm sure. And, and look, like you said, it's plenty big enough, especially for, for the Quest <laughs> yeah. headset, you know. Um, so just out of curiosity, how many people are at Myron Software? Is it just you, you know? Or is it, you know, a, a whole team of people? Uh, for a long while, it has been just me. <laughs> I started working on the game uh, as a side project after my day job, and I did it for four years like this. Um, when the game started on App Lab, the sales started to make me able to live from my development work. So now it's my day job, and... Um, I started working with freelance, especially for to remake all the buildings and stuff like that for the quest. And uh, now that the game is about to release, I start to expand the team, and I I want to have a team of like uh, four or five people. That's kind of the the magic number we've noticed for quest games, where you get the best quality. It seems like that under, under ten. Yeah, that under ten seems to be magic. Yeah, I think it's a good size because with this size, you have enough different skill set, but you also still have a very good communication. And I think it's the key, really, to, to make something very good. Yeah, and I mean, this is a game that has... Uh, it's very often... We, we review App Lab games a lot on our podcast, and it's very often these games don't have many reviews or anything like that. You'll see, like, 10 reviews, or 10 written reviews, 30 total reviews, even, like, 75 reviews is is quite a bit but if i'm if i remember correctly deism has like 700 something reviews you know for for a 15 dollar app lab game that's that's really solid and these are because it's good because it's <laughs> and this is one of those things if you don't like god sims it's very clear what the game is you're probably not no, going the to buy it the description of the game is is actually like more spot than on honest. yeah yeah but if you like god sims and you like strategy games and you like vr you're gonna get 15 dollars worth of of game time out of this for how long we've owned it and i still get entertainment out of it yeah so it's like it's not like a one and done by any means Mm -hmm. and uh just to be clear with the the listeners anybody who listens to this today and they go to buy the game out of excitement you know knowing it's coming to the quest store but it's on app lab right now just temporarily it is not for sale right it's going to release again september 1st Yes, that's it. It just temporarily removed from the store uh, for technical reasons to be tra- to transition from App Lab to the to the main store. So it's just uh, a few days. Just yeah, there a has technical thing. There hasn't been a huge amount of games that have dropped on App Lab to go to the official store. I feel like we could probably count them on two hands. So you you know, in in some sort of ways, I'm sure you're a little bit of a guinea pig. You know, figure out some some technical <laughs> things and and the whole migration stuff, but. What's that whole process been like for you as a developer to, to get that news that, hey, you know, you're coming to the store and then all these technical things, you know, were there, you know, game updates that you had to do to get it, you know, technically ready or was your game pretty ready to go and it's been a smooth transition? Uh, I, I had to, to do a lot of work, especially for the Quest 1 optimization. It was the, the biggest challenge for me because uh, on App Lab you only have to, you, you are forced to support the Quest 1, but they allow, uh, they allow it at 16, uh, 60 FPS on the Quest 2 is 72 so uh, it's kind of okay when you can reach 72 you can reach 60 on the Quest 1 more or less so it, it was okay for App Lab but then when I when I was able to release it on the main store it started to be an issue because I had to make it run on 72 FPS on Quest 1 and this is a really different story so uh, and also I knew that a lot of people already played the game as is on Quest and were really happy about the frame rate nobody ever complained about that so I had to remove stuff from them and uh, they will get nothing in return because they, they were happy <laughs> with the frame rate. So it was a really complicated situation for me. <laughs> uh, so I spent six months doing just that optimization. It was crazy, really. I, we remade all the buildings of the game. Uh, we optimized a lot of system. Uh, it's, it's really crazy what we did. Uh, and. Um, finally, I made it. <laughs> I made it happen. So it, it was really hard. But now it it is good, and 
this is the only thing I had to change. Um, but since I knew that delay, um, I knew that it would not be possible to do that in just two weeks, uh, like a quick fix. I decided to change my plans a bit, and that's why the Kingdom update is already there uh, for the release. It's because then I said, okay, if, if players have to wait that much, uh, I want to give them re uh, something really cool before, so they can play with it for a while. And the Kingdom update uh, was, was a big one to to really change the game and keep it appealing for, for a while six months alone just on frame rate optimization you know i think that's these are things that you know when we we interviewed chris brute the director of the the content ecosystem for meta and that was even something you were saying is like look the official quest store has a lot more strict some standards yeah a different. lot more strict and he's like for some developers it, it resource wise the amount of everything it might take to get it ready for the official store it doesn't make sense for them it might be better to stay on the the app lab store and it's you know us as consumers were always like, oh, why is this game on App Lab? Why is this on the official store? But there's so much going on in the background. Yeah, that we under we kind of understand everyone's yeah, side of the story now. But six months on 12 frames that you never got any <laughs> any complaints on. I, I, I get what you mean by that because it's like, oh, I never got a complaint about it. Now I have to take stuff away from them. But, you know, I think this this is uh, – I never want anybody to, like, lose use of their headset or, like, games to stop supporting it completely. But – you can see how when developers are going to be able to get the choice if they're going to support Quest 1 versus it being mandatory, you can definitely see how it's going to bring games to the next level, in my opinion, because that's six months of time, instead of you know optimizing, you could have been working on just making the game better overall, and just now every time you pump out an update, you got to focus on that Quest 1. I get why people with a Quest 1 mm -hmm. don't want games to stop supporting it, because you own a Quest 1, but... I think it's reach gonna, a point though where it's, it's, it's gonna, holding holding it, back the progression. Yeah, and are you able to see as a developer like what percentage of your consumers are Quest One versus Quest Two? Like, is it a large percentage of the people use Quest One, or is it pretty small? I don't have precise number uh, about that, but um, I know that this is more or less five percent or something between five and ten percent, not more than that. I'm pretty sure. Numbers probably just going to continue to little well, yeah, little it's shrinking time. all the time, of course, because yeah. uh, there's quests that are just broken and uh, mm -hmm. new people coming for quest with quest two, and people with quest one that changed for quest two. So <laughs> yeah, and I don't <laughs> and want people to pitch for it, come at me, be like, "Damn, these <clears throat> scruffles pitching to to end our quest one support and stuff." But uh, it's just the reality. Well, it's I just th the evolution of of any system i mean yeah you can still play your xbox 360 but... yeah i just don't expect a game to be released for the 360 correct you can yeah. of course they have a library for that too yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, in some sense in some sense i understand the expectation because the, re the release of the quest 2 was so close Three years ago from still. the uh, from the yeah. quest 1 the problem is not the problem is really the, the the delay between the two because it was like the quest 1 happened and then just one year, I think, just after that, the Quest 2 happened, and it was really a game changer. The difference was not was not a small one. It was really a big difference. The Quest 2 is really more powerful than the Quest 1. Um, I think, in some ways, they should have waited before uh, and released just the Quest 2 as the, as the Quest 1. It would have been really awesome, because then uh, yeah, really, I'd love to a know lot of game would have been really better, <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I and the consumers wouldn't be having that feeling of oh I bought something. They and should have I... offered a a buyback program for a one time yeah, buyback of off. you know seventy yeah, five percent off. I know a lot of people are selling their Quest One when the Quest Two drops, but no, I definitely see both sides of it. That's why I say I don't want people coming at me with pitchforks because I totally get why they want their game still supported. I mean, the Quest One only still to this day came out three years ago. That's not a super long time for console lifespan, but. I'd love to know uh, internally what happened with the release. Like maybe they weren't even anticipating some some chip components or like the the Snapdragon XR2 or whatever to come out, you know, immediately right after or anything. So there could have been not even their anticipation and then just industry changes. But I, I, I get what you're saying too because you buy something, then a week, a year later, people stop supporting it. You know, it's tough. So, but you know, we're three years after release. I wonder what what the point is. What's the user based number before? You know, Meta goes no more Quest One. <laughs> you know, or no more Quest One requirement, or make and make it by choice. You know, it's it's. I just like to see the the developers be able to just really focus harder on the mm -hmm. the Quest Two. 
And I'm not knocking Quest One users no. by any stretch, but again, I can see their side. But again, that's six months that you could have spent on mm-hmm. the pirate update, which sounds so much fun. <laughs> Honestly, I just think they should just do the same thing they did for App Lab. Just allow uh, 60 FPS for Quest One, mm-hmm. and then call it a day, and so uh, everybody can be happy. Uh, Quest One players still have game to play because now they just have nothing to play, more or less. They will be able to play this in this because uh, I was crazy and I did six <laughs> months of rock. But <laughs> for most people, uh, for most games, it's just a no brainer. You just ignore the quest one, and it's, it's a bit of a shame because I think the device could still be useful if the limit was just 260 FPS. So I'm, I'm going to change subject a little bit. How, how excited are you that you're moving to this official star? Ah, <laughs> it has been a like... very long journey for me, so I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, I'm also a bit um, uh, wondering if how the launch will be for me, because this seems in a weird position. It's a launch, but the game is already well known in some way. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how many people don't know the game already, um, because... I. I must admit that the game has been really successful on App Lab, probably m- way more than b- most games on, on App Lab. And uh, now I, I'm really curious to see what will happen. Uh, but it's definitely better. It's uh, like uh, I, I worked so much on that thing, seeing it finally uh, appearing on the official store page is so cool. Last day I searched to, for, I searched for the game to show it to to a friend, and when I searched, uh, there is no App Lab thing to to click on <laughs> to say and there is no warning saying the game is crap when you open the page <laughs> it's so much better now i i'm really happy about that already what the brain consumes is <clears throat> an antivirus message almost like oh my god why is this no a i, I commented that um it doesn't show in my my game library with the app lab banner on it anymore yep. so they've already stripped it of the stripped it of its app lab yeah you go on the store page you see coming soon yeah, I get some games, you know, can stay on App Lab and they'll be fine. But this is one that, A, the progression of, I wanted to see where it was going to go. Mm-hmm. If it was just like a, and I'm going back over a year, is this just like a project that is there and, the, you know, but to see it now officially going to hit that store, I think there's going to be a large base of people who have, because we talk to people all the time and they're like, no, I don't buy anything on App Lab. What's App Lab? Yeah, I, I think just, you know, this is a game that a lot of people who are very deep into the VR niche probably already know about Mm -hmm. because it's one of the more popular app lab games. But I think if we could see the percentage of people that use app lab versus the official store, I think we'd be shocked at how much (laughs) less people, you know, are, are using both. I think the majority of users only use the official store, even though like, you know, if you're big into the content creator world or, you know, you watch a lot of YouTubers and stuff like that, you, it might seem like more people use app lab, but I don't know. I have a feeling that the the percentage of people who only play official store games just dwarfs the percentage that play both. So I think that there's just going to be a lot more organic traffic coming across the game. It's a genre that, I mean, I love God Sims. Mm-hmm. You know, I see a game. I haven't complained once. No, I see this genre. <laughs> I'm buying a game like this in a heartbeat, and I know that there's a lot of people who are also like that, but maybe they don't browse on App Lab. So I imagine the popularity is gonna mm-hmm. gonna shoot up. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that. That's huge. Um, So, yeah, I mean, the game, geez, 2016 to 2022, that's six years. Uh, You you mentioned that. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's crazy. So was, I don't mean to cut you off, but was the intent when you put it on App Lab, and I'm going back to you made it, you're making this for yourself at the start, and now it's changing and it's evolving, but was your goal always once you put it on App Lab to like, I want this to go to the store, or was just this, part of the natural progression of the work you've put into it um before i put it on a lab i i've been denied two times to release on Questor. i tried to pitch uh, oculus two times and was denied uh, both times so um i really felt like the the game will never be on the quest or right? something maybe about the team of of the game or or just the fact that yeah a game made by a solo dev more or less it's not something that they will want to have on the on the official store um, but I, wa- I was really happy because 
the transition between siloing to AppLab was a really game changer. It's, it's, it was really important at that time, for, especially for me, having the ability to, to give the updates automatically like the, the official apps and to have a page like the official apps. Um, it was really an interesting thing for me and uh, it, it allowed me to, to make a living with it. So it's really important. I, I always knew that if something like this happened, it would be really cool for me because uh, I knew that most people who play the game by sideloading it, they sideload a version and then they continue play it that version for a while actually. They never updated the game. So, um, and I was updating it constantly with very big updates associated before. So it, it was a bit annoying for me because I said, oh, if those people played the latest version, they would be so happy about that. And maybe they would talk to friends. And, and uh, when AppLab uh, came, I, I had a chance to be one of the first game on it. Probably because I, I tried so many times to reach the main store <laughs> that Achilles wanted to give me something to, to so I shut up a bit. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it gave me the chance to be um, to have a lot of exposure. Uh, when Apple launched, there was some articles on the press about that, etc. That other ch other games don't have the chance now to have the same uh, exposure on the press. So uh, the sales went up really fast, and I think then the momentum was there, and I tried to keep going on on this momentum of updating the game really constantly. So the the community uh, was very good and talked about the game to to their friends. I I know people who got the quest just to play Daysim, so it's crazy when you think about it <laughs> no again it's a niche that people who like god sims they go crazy about it so it's it it's one of those when you know you buy a quest to you know you're looking for new experiences you know this is what happened to me before app lab exists because when we got our quest to the app lab app lab wasn't out yet i went through the list like all right let me get a shooter let me get a story-based game let me get you know a strategy game let me get this 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 and if the genre doesn't exist it's almost like uh you know, a dagger to the heart. You're like, oh, <laughs> did I get this before the system's ready? So if you like God Sims, you go to search for one and there isn't one, man, That I feel like that that hurts the store. So I feel like a game like this is very important to get on because there's people who will buy a headset just for a God, good God Sim. There's people who, you know, they're scrolling through the game store their first couple days owning a headset. Having a game like this is going to get them to keep going on, you know, those first couple months, which is kind of that danger zone, I feel that somebody might buy the headset, use it a little bit, then put it down and not put it back on. It's if they're, the genres they love aren't on the store, they're not going to keep using it. And this is one you have to have, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think... And again, price point. You compare the price of these VR games to, let's say, console games. The math almost doesn't add up. $15, <laughs> dude. That's nothing. Is that, is that the locked-in price for the store release? Yes, yes, it's the, it's the price that will stay uh, like this. It used to be even cheaper because when uh, when it was uh, at uh, yeah, eight euro, eight dollar or something, uh, when I thought that the game was not good enough to to be uh, ready, because uh, I wanted to give a uh, like a a bonus for the people who supported the game early. I think uh, it's it's also they they helped me a lot to design uh, the new mechanics to. Uh, they gave me a lot of feedback, uh, a lot of bugs fixed. So it, the game is in a really good shape now, uh, coming to the Quest Store because I had so much people playing it and give me f giving me feedback. I wanted to reward them for that, so the game was cheap for a really long time. And when Kingdom Update happened, uh, this one was the big update that changed everything. So I changed the price at that point. That, that makes total sense. And More content 14, and. Fourteen ninety nine. It's like it's yeah, still it's a still steal. a very reasonable price. It's a steal. <laughs> it's a, it's I, I try to. It's a good price for me. The the right price. I, I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we live in Massachusetts. You'll pay uh fifteen dollars for a cocktail in Massachusetts. That last <laughs> large coffee at Starbucks It'll probably costs close yeah. to that. With yeah, tip, you know. You know, it'll, you'll get a piece of food that costs more than fifteen dollars, and it's going to be gone in ten minutes. Whereas this game, I promise you, you're well, getting much more than ten minutes worth of enjoyment out of. And being sandbox too, it's like every time I've ever played it, I don't play it exactly the same. I don't set things up exactly the same. No, you got a different, you know. And again, depending on your mood. So it's again. <laughs> 
I mean, because, yeah, you can just set things up to just be a monster and kill everybody. Taking out work aggression on your virtual citizens, just fucking die. You can also (laughs) do weird experiments, you know, like uh, trying to uh, to isolate some island with only uh, cavemen in it. And uh, the the rest of the world is just full of uh, skyscrapers. And (laughs) you can try. And what happened when I just opened the mountains (laughs) and they meet each other? can do stuff like that oh my god jeez i contacted tribes i have done something (laughs) similar where i won't i'll like prevent really a tribe from getting really established and i'll let the rest of the world progress and i'll just keep throwing them in the ocean or volcanoes (laughs) and shit and then they'll they'll show up again and they'll start their society or their little town so for you as the developer who's been playing this game you know the whole time who's always working on it is that is doing those little experiments how you keep yourself entertained and still still keep the game fun yes it's still, it's still fun for me because i made the game in a way that um i i always try to make it in a way that i still enjoy it when i play it because uh, i i try to um encourage some kind of emergent behavior of the of the humans you know sometimes there's stuff happening and i don't really know what happens you know <laughs> and if I dig deep, I can find what happened, but I like that because it feels a bit ma- magic, you know. <laughs> and it keeps me motivated to put even more stuff in it. That's it's awesome. also, let's let's admit it, the more uh, there are so many moving parts in the game that sometimes it's really hard to have a, a big idea of what happens all the time. Uh, that, that's the case with all strategy games. As those those blocks grow, as you place more spots, you might be looking over here. Everything's going good over here. Then you look. That's happened like, to me with fires. Yep. Like what? The, the, yep. Why? I'm focusing on a whole other area, and you can you know when shit's going down, mm-hmm. but it's like where the hell, where's this coming from? Mm-hmm. But I try to like stay ahead of the curve sometimes, especially with like replenishing stuff or making it rain. I'll just try to keep. <laughs> I'm a pretty busy god when I'm I'm trying to get the whole world going here. So. For you, what's the moment that you knew that, hey, this isn't just a game for you? You know, it's picking up momentum and you, you're you going to be able to go full time with it. I know you, you mentioned you went full time, you know, after the App Lab release. But what was that that moment where it was like, oh, my, I, I think I, I think I might have a career here? Um, actually, it was really close after the, the first release in 2016 because um, I, I, I first put it on Steam just to have some feedback because uh, in that time I knew nobody would have a headset. So uh, I make the thing for me, but I wanted to, to have a bit more feedback on it and ideas too. And I put it on Steam just to see if someone wanted to play stuff like that too, as it was one of the only one of his kind more or less. And uh, I was really impressed because uh, a lot of people tried it, even if this it's rough shape of the start, you know, and and really loved the concept of it. And I really felt like if I kept com- improving it, it could be really big at some time because the, the, the art of it was really good, actually. Uh, I just find the fun uh, by, yeah, randomly, you know, just serendipity. <laughs> and then when I saw that it was a really cool concept and I, I said, okay, we'll see to push it as far as I can and let's see what happens. Uh, I, I always wanted to go full time on it, uh, just that it was not possible just with the sales on Steam. Uh, the market was really small at that point, uh, but the people who played the game, uh, were really invested and really enjoyed it. I, I knew a strong community was really possible uh, for it. I also made the bet that um, the people who got a VR headset, the first one, were probably uh, less uh, the strategy game players because in general those are really crappy PCs and they have time to they take the time to upgrade it. So uh, I said, yeah, maybe in five years the market will be ready for for strategy games, and then they seem could be good. And it's it's more or less what happens actually. So that was a that was a good gamble to make. Yeah, you know, I think that things worked out. You know, these type of graphics, I think you know that they work good on the Quest. That's what you know, gamers like me and Stras over here, we're used to those graphics. They don't stick out as bad or anything like that. It's on no, par with. We've done PC gaming and console gaming. Mm-hmm. our whole lives as well so i mean i'm not, i don't feel like i suffer when i when i use the quest so it's uh-uh. like i definitely i think you you were right with your gamble the market's ready for these type of strategy games you know and right now it's the only one really mm-hmm. 
of its kind doing this on the quest that I know of. So that I've seen. Were you a developer? You know, that was my next pro- question. Professionally before going, yeah, yeah. What were you doing before? You know, going full time into a VR developer. Were you doing different software engineering, different developing elsewhere? Is like, you know, developing games or something that you did as a hobby that became a career. Uh, I never worked on any game before, uh, but I was doing software development, so all the code part was already uh, uh, new by me, uh, something that I already knew. But uh, yeah, I had to learn Unity, uh, game design, uh, a lot of things about 3D modeling and uh, and uh, how 3D engines work, especially when I had to, optimi- to optimize the game so much for, for the quest, I really had to go really deep into it to learn so many things. But uh, yeah, I, I had the chance to already have a strong baggage uh, in programming and it definitely was useful when I try to make a game for myself, especially a game like this, which rely a lot on AI stuff. Um, it's a lot of code, actually, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, it's good. That's why I choose that also. I, I wanted something that um, I could benefit from my previous skills, but also learn new things to do. It was not the most obvious choice because uh, <laughs> something a bit more uh, yeah, shooty shooty could be <laughs> maybe simpler to make, uh, at least require less line of code, but it's a touch or less testing. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy with the end results. No, strategy games have so much going on in the background. It also you sounds like, like Tommy likes it to self challenge, not just yeah. necessarily taking the path. Well, like you're making easiest resistance. Yeah, you're making what you love. It's like, I, I, I think that there's enough shooters on the quest. There's enough rhythm games on the quest. You know, I, I want more strategy games. I want board games. I want grand strategy. I want top-down Again, strategy. Again, we, we went to App Lab to get this because Looking. there is no, yeah, because yeah. there is, this was, this is the option. Yeah. This was the option. So and now it's an even better option. It sounds like everything about this game, you know, you mentioned you do the community voting and stuff like that, but a lot of times the community voting seems to, you know, lines up with things that you want too. It's, you're making a game that you love and I think that that's why it's ending up to be a good game it's inspirational also because yeah. more often than not when we talk to the the smaller studios or the solo studios um it re- i used to ask the question you know what would you recommend people to do to mm-hmm. get into vr but it's like they need to hear nothing more than the story of the developer yeah just start doing it and you'll see that make what you love all walks of life are coming and but you're all and I'll always give the credit to every developer in VR right now is you guys are laying that early foundation Mm -hmm. doing probably the hardest legwork the hardest marketing that's going to have to be done carrying the industry right now correct for five years from now for you know a whole new batch of people to be getting on board as the popularity grows yeah it's like you're all taking major risk the hardware can be as good as it Good, good as possible, but if there's not content, people mm-hmm. aren't going to stay using it. You need games like this in order for people to to stay using. So That's when every developer we talk to every week is going to turn into a consulting agency 20 right. years from now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, benefit of being the early adapters. But something I love to ask, I got to ask it pretty much to every every developer we interview. This will be a good, good one. Yeah, I mean, what was your first VR experience? Uh, you know, what was that moment? You know, that first time you tried a, a headset on and you're like, oh man, I think everybody who works in VR has that. Their, their first time is always a wow moment. So for you, what was your um, first experience? For me, the, the first thing was uh, the lab from uh, Valve. It was the, because the, the first headset I, I got was the HTC Vive. And it was really awesome because it was a collection of things. So uh, I really, it was a really good uh, thing to really experience different things, you know, and see what was fun and what was not. And uh, actually, there is a part in the lab when you open a, a drawer, and inside it there is a really small uh, character from the portal, you know, the small uh, sticky man. And then you you can, uh, if I remember well, you can just make them explode and burn them. I can remember, but it's a and when I so this is probably one of the things that make me oh that would be so cool to make a god game in VR you know with small people and blah blah, blah. It, it was very inspirational for me and uh, also it's good because I saw different things so I, I really enjoy also the, the sh- shooting arrows and everything that was in it actually was really nice 
but that small thing in the drawer, you know, really inspired me a lot. Yeah, it's small details sometimes like that. Yeah, that change no, a lot it, of things. Yeah, right. It's funny what gives you inspiration. That's why when you get inspiration, you know, you gotta act on it. Act on it right away. Yeah. And like I think that you know, it's always in in VR games. It's usually never like the core aspect of the game I like the most. It's the small little side things, a lot of interactability, a lot of like example. Golf Plus used to have the the Unity symbol come a up, smack but, sound. If yeah, you hit somebody with the club. Yep, and it would, a little smack pop up would hit too, like a little comic book one. Yep. And I think we spent an hour just whacking Beating each other with golf clubs, yeah. <laughs> just nonstop. It's always small Real things mature. like that. And, yeah. <laughs> in cookout, we took uh, ketchup and mayonnaise bottles and spent probably 10 minutes spraying each other all around. Not at all what the game's about, but it's those small small little things in VR that always seem to to stick out the most. So, um, I another... think it's one of the big differences between traditional games and VR stuff. Um, it's in, in traditional games, the mechanics are super important, the gameplay loop, and uh, also the story sometimes. But you can really focus on that. If you just do that in VR, it's a good game, but for me, it's no, not a good VR experience. Um, I think for a good VR game, you, you need to have a lot of things that are not really useful to the core gameplay loop, but just serve to, to be immersive, you know. For example, the bottle in Half-Life Alyx, it's, it's, a, don't, it's not useful to the gameplay loop, but everybody take the bottle and look like this. Oh, it's so awesome. Man. And everybody does it. And then you have the pencil and you draw on the on the window and everybody does it. And just because two things are in the game, that it's not just a game, it's really an experience and you, you live it. And I think it's really important. And if you do a VR game and without that, you are missing the point somewhere, I think. Yeah, no, it's, uh, again, the small things in VR are the best. So you know what I'm already wondering? What's that? If Tommy's got future projects, not this game, but future projects in the back of the head already burning to come out to the front after the momentum kind of. Well, if this was his first game. That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, this is the first, you make your first game, and you do your time on App Lab and get it popular enough and, and coded properly enough that it's on the official store in, in in days i mean come on what's next besides <laughs> the updates that are already going to be you know kick ass so yeah I, i've just always because you know people always have things planned oh it yeah it could be a dozen different games kicking around in there so i'm, I'm excited because i don't think it's going to be the last no and you see that myron <laughs> studio you know myron software label on a game you know it's going to be good at this yeah. point you know already laying a self foundation for it's put a lot of pressure on my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately that's the problem making it's your, high, it's your games. fault for making a good game yeah. that hasn't slowed down shame so, on I you mean... you should have made a crappy one for your first one that no one would expect <laughs> to, to be honest it's sometimes that terrifies me <laughs> i say oh my god the first one was good what if i make a <laughs> shitty one for the second one the expectation will be so different you know <laughs> Uh, actually, I, I already know what I want to make after this one. But I say after, but it will be in parallel because I think I will split my time 50-50 um, on both projects because I, I really want to continue to expand this in for me. It's, it's been my, my patient project for so long and I still have so many ideas. But um, the, the next one will also be a god game, also inspired by a very old classic, but it will be multiplayer. Um, and you'll <laughs> <laughs> cooperative multiplayer, but uh, well, with, with that trick, you know, <laughs> with a <that> twist, <laughs> let's say. Oh. No, co-op games are our absolute favorite, so I'm, f oh, that's that's huge news. I was going to ask if there was ever plans to make this one multiplayer, and it doesn't need to be, so it's like it's a dumb question to ask, but I just fiend uh, for that multiplayer a lot. In fact, uh, a lot of people want to play this in with a friend, they, they don't. They just want to be with their friends while while building in the sim. So it's what's, uh, unfortunately the game has not been made in a in a way that's really easy to put multiplayer in it now. Because yeah, when I made it, I, I knew almost n nothing in game development, you know. But for the next one, I will start with multiplayer in mind directly. The game will be playable uh, solo, but you will also be able to play it with a friend in cooperative mode and just have fun with two or three of them, you know. 
Oh man, I, I will have a good idea about what I, what I want to make. The, the next one will be really cool, believe me. <laughs> when when that's ready to be announced and you're you're ready to talk about that more, definitely we we'd love to have you back on to hear about it because you know co-op gaming is our favorite. You know, father son combo over here. Any game that we can play together is pretty freaking cool. Yeah, and, see if it's a good game. Yeah, and usually, like, example, a game like, like this, we'll be playing it, and we'll be like, oh, man, I wish we could play it together, even though there's nothing about the gameplay that would, like, I don't know. Dictate make... needing to yeah, have somebody else there. There's some games that, like, you go, oh, this would work great with co-op, and it would work great with co-op, but it's really not required or, like, necessary or... or... Maybe just a chair to sit in so you can yeah, watch spec- somebody yeah, play Or, guy. you know, help, too, so, but, like, still we're sitting there going, oh, I wish we could do co-op where I would never be like that in flat stream gaming. So when I hear, you know, your next one is going to be co-op, I'm I'm so freaking excited. But I think a big reason why this game ended up so good is because you didn't just drop it and move on to the next mm-hmm. game to try. You you know, it might be your first game, but where it's at today isn't where it was in 2016. And I think a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll pump out a game and then, you know, just for experience and they move on to the next and the next and the next. Oh, and there's next and the there's next. a litany of abandoned projects. Yeah, whereas you made your first one and you never abandoned it. And it doesn't sound like you have any... In- anticipation abandoning it so uh, you know that's part of the reason why it's so good is because it was your passion project you never you never dropped passion. it i'm yeah. waiting for the passion word you never dropped <laughs> it and i think that that's that's huge you know it it shows that even if a game isn't perfect on day one listen to the community keep putting it as long as it's an idea you love and it can get there so i, I think that for me it was the whole point of early access you know if you do an early access and you don't take uh, user feedback into consideration you are just selling a game that's not finished <laughs> what's and the I point mean, of it yeah i mean look, well, i think cause it's years. like anything else people just want you know at the end of the day through all the bullshit people are like i, I want to make the money mm-hmm. and not willing to put in the actual amount of time you talk to any small business owner they'll be like no i didn't really eat for 10 years you know it's just the way it goes it's the same with game development it takes what two years if you're hustling four years if you're by yourself this was six years early access it just it just left early access with the official store release is that correct yes that's yeah it. so yeah. six years early access yeah. you know so it's I not mean, like you're being paid on the day you decide you're going to start so it's it's crazy the sacrifice yeah. people are making yeah so and i'm I really early... excited to to see what people that got the game in 2016 and probably never touched it again <laughs> will, will... <laughs> We'll see what, when they will play it six years later and when they will have that notification and see and say, yeah, oh, it's so released now. And I think a lot of them will just be mind blown. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just for clarification for any listeners who have played the game, they love it and they actually own it on App Lab. Just to be clear, when the game does come out again on September 1st, you know, it's a pretty obvious question, but it's good to iron out. You know, you're not going to need to rebuy the game or anything. The, the migration is going to be seamless for anybody who already owns the game, correct? Yeah, obviously, I, I don't do the migration myself. So yeah. <laughs> I can only say what uh, I've been told to. Um, the game will be uh, available to all the people who got it on App Lab. It will be on the, officially, on the official store. They will own it automatically. They will also get the Rift version automatically. And the people who got the Rift version also will get the app lab, uh, the Quest version automatically. So cross you cross have, platform you have support. Exactly. And uh, in fact, since the game, you can make bigger world on the PC version. So I think it, it really makes sense that if you can play with a beefy computer with a link, it's really worth it to play it like that because the game just is beautiful like this, and you can make bigger world. It's really fun. But there is also a good good thing to be able to, to play it just on the go. So, um, yeah, having both versions automatically for me, it's really a cool thing. Yeah, I always love when we interview developers and I go to get some sort of, like, excitement resolution out of it and I leave the interview more excited. More excited than when you started. And not only in this case, <laughs> for this game, now I'm going to freaking think about that new game come you know that you have in your mind. I can't wait for both of these to, you know, this to drop on the official store, you know, check it, check it all out see this pirate update coming in the future and then also i mean geez the next project so i i anticipate a really nice launch i I just (laughs) it's deserving it really is so uh you know a couple you know one last thing before we let you go i know you know time is precious with developers like you you know you guys are you're, you're hustling so hard so i definitely appreciate you taking the time to be here today but something i always love to ask you know it's like you work so much 
with the headset on, at the end of the day, are you still gaming in other games? Or, you know, when you're done working, is it like no VR for you? Uh, it depends, <laughs> actually. Uh, when it's too hot, like like uh, at the moment, I don't play VR stuff too much because it's just too, too hot here. We don't have AC in Belgium, so <laughs> you are dying at the moment. <laughs> Uh, when I was optimizing for the Quest One uh, for six months, I must admit that I was just disgusted by it. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, I play. I still play PC games, and I also play uh, VR games. I really enjoyed Little Cities, for example. It was really cool. I just was a bit uh, disappointed because I really like to smash everything. <laughs> I'm so used to destroy everything when I uh, in the sim that yeah. It was just a small thing that disappointed me. Otherwise, the game is really awesome. I enjoyed you mentioned uh, Eternal Starlight. Also a game I enjoyed to play. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I like this one. It's so much that we even have a bundle together on Steam now. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I forgot to mention that. That's uh, that w I completely slipped my mind. Yeah, you have a, a sale bundle for anybody who plays PC VR where you can pick up Eternal Starlight and Decem, right? Yes, yes, you can do that on Steam. Two great strategy games. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, I'm I'm a sucker for these games. Again, I don't need to be looking through the eyes of a. I love those games too. Don't get me wrong, but I love top-down strategy. I want, you know, civilization. I in feel VR. more in control. To be yeah. honest with you. What I would do to play Civ in VR, like natively. Oh my god! Don't even get me started. But yet they they have Civ on the civilization on the phone and in, in on the app store. You can go download it. It's like, come on, man, just give me the. Give me a quest port. I'd go crazy. I love strategy games. So I'm I'm super excited for you to to be on the official store September 1st. That's huge. That's that's. Jeez, I I love these kind of success stories yeah, too. It's literally a success story. So um, you know, like I said, I know your time's time's precious and valuable. But uh, is there anything you want to say to our listeners before we you know before we wrap things up? Maybe where they can join some of these online communities, uh, and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I have a Discord server, for example. You can really join it, even if you don't hold the game, but just you like God games. I, everybody's welcome on it. It's, we are chatting a lot of other God games or strategy games on it too, because I love them. So. <laughs> Sometimes I even share them myself on the on the Discord, and also it makes me people to talk to because I, I work alone a lot uh, most of the time. So <laughs> it's a good day. Eh? If you are from Europe, it's cool too. So uh, I, because most of my players now are on the other side <laughs> of the world, so <laughs> for the time zone, it's not the best. And otherwise, yeah, let's get check out Daysim. Really, you will enjoy it. Um, if you have been, a, if you are, have been a children playing with small soldiers one day, if you in your life. Believe me, this is the same feeling. Really. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who loves strategy games, God Sims, this is. What you're looking for in VR, I promise. Even if you don't know you're looking for it, if you just play it, you'll you'll be presently surprised. Yeah, anybody. Yeah, especially if you get that that joy out of sandbox games, the open ended. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no linear finish or anything. It's just experience. You know, you're. I like you're gonna, the evolution. Yeah, you're gonna get a, a real kick out of this one. So I'll throw the the links for your Discord server and the voting website. You know, in the the episode description for this, and you know, stay tuned for the release of Decem. You know, this is a this is a big one. I'm I'm so excited for it. So thank you for joining us. Congratulations for sure. Thank yeah, you for congrats. Your invitation. And, yeah. Definitely well deserved. Thank you for joining us, say Tommy, and uh, like like Strat said, congrats. But we'll, I'm definitely gonna hound you to to come back on when you're ready to talk about that that next game because now yeah. I'm freaking excited. So. <laughs> I will be glad to come and see you that uh, when it's done. Awesome. So Don't worry. enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and check you out next week. Mm -hmm.